We've got a whole new Oswald thing unfolding at this time. All through the summer of 63, and in the fall when he ends up out there in, in Mexico City, and we have another records, you know. Can we jump to him real quick and explain what was going down with Oswald in 63? Well, uh, Oswald is uh, on his way. He's got a, 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 you don't actually need a visa to get into Mexico, but you, 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 you get in line and you get a, you get, you get a piece of paper. How long had he been back in the U.S. from Russia? He got off the boat in, in uh, Ju- the 2nd of June, 1962, when everything was a mess in, okay. in, in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Right. Now okay. we are in 1963. He's been there the whole year establishing his uh, Castro legend. It starts in January when he puts a placard around his neck. It says, Viva Fidel. Right. That's when you know it's game on because he's already been a commie in the Soviet Union. And now, you know, he's 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 gonna wear the Castro badge as well. Remember? Castro and the KGB and right. Oswald. Yep. Okay, so he um what so the, here we have him now in Mexico City. Now his story when he gets there, and I know and and I have a reason to believe he was there, but he was also impersonated. That's another whole story that people want to talk about and argue about, but it's, it's I think it's very simple. Anyway, um, what he is doing is he goes his first day to the, uh, the Cuban consulate and says, I want, I need um, a visa from you to go to Cuba because I'm going to, I want to go through Cuba and go back to Moscow again. I want to. I want to go back there. And I'm redefect. He, he wanted to redefect. He told, this is the Cubans, that he he wanted to redefect again to the communist side. He wanted to go over to Russia again. Uh huh. Now, and you have to understand that this is about the time of. This is not even. Um, this is October. This is the first week of October. Right. Actually, the day that he went to the Cuban consulate, I think it was probably technically something like 30 September. And so... Um, Wasn't, didn't he meet with like the head of assassinations there? Well, that's, that's the rushes. I'm not, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. But he starts with the Cuban consulate. Now, what she says to him is, look, uh, you, you, where's your, your, your Russian visa? We can't give you a, a transit visa if, you're Cuba, if you don't have... You know, the Russian one. Mm-hmm. And besides which, you don't even have any pictures with you. So he has to go to a booth and take pictures of himself. And then he goes over to the uh, Russian embassy. And yes, uh, the one of the consular officials, one of the two consular officials is Valery Kostikov. They're all, they're all consular officials. He just so happens to be the KGB head of assassinations in the Western Hemisphere Division. And that was what he was supposed to be doing. They wanted to make sure that he has contact with, with, with Kostikov. Who told him to do this stuff? Who told him to do this stuff in the first place to go over to, to Moscow? His handlers. He had handlers who told that you need to, to get the story first and then you can, we can like uh, maybe draw straws as to who and how many people, very few people are in on this. And this is not Sully. This is not, not solely. No, this is another, but it's the same thing. They learned about it. They understood what happened. Whoever was behind it. Just let me let me play this out with you. So what what happens is uh, he the the Cuban, excuse me the 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 Russians the Soviets tell him, look, you're an American. We can't give you a visa here. The only place you can get a visa from is your embassy in the United States in Washington. So I'm sorry. So then he goes back to Duran, Sylvia Duran, and the Cuban consulate and says, "Yeah, they they're gonna they agreed to give me my my visa." Right. She said, "Really?" She talks to Kostikov every day because I got said she picks up the phone, calls Kostikov, and says, "I got this guy here says you did," and then he's no 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 that's, that didn't happen. He was a, he's a kooky guy, you know. And so she said, "Nah, you're busted. We're not <laughs> we're not doing that." Okay. And so. He's he's out of he's out of bullets for that Friday, 
So he goes back on Saturday and tries again with the Russians. And all of this is, is reality, this part of it. So he, should, he really has no business going there because the, the, the embassies and consulates are closed on Saturdays. Well, it just turns out that on Saturday mornings, the, the Russian consulate guys have a volleyball game. And so they're all there showing up in their shorts and stuff. And he, here's and the, the, the guard says, you know, buzzes them and says, there's this guy Oswald out here wants to talk to you. And says, well, they let him in. And so they, they go through it again. And and they he 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 puts his he puts a revolver on the table and says, "See what the FBI does to me, you know? All the, they won't they won't help me." So he's he's saying he wants to go back to Russia so bad, and he can't get any help, you know, from from Americans. And he you know what? Oh, what was me? What can I do? So they said, "Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to send a message." to um, Washington that you need to fill out to request a visa. And then they can send it to you here from Washington. How about that? He just pushes the paperwork away and walks out. That is the end of reality. Now it becomes Hollywood, net, Hollywood uh, what I want to say, fun and games. Phone calls start to be made. And uh, it's somebody calls up and, 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 and starts saying, asking for documentation and says, how has, has the reply come back yet from Washington for me? Now, the problem with that is there was nothing sent to Washington in the first place. Oswald didn't fill it out and didn't care. Right. So you have to, you have to understand how that's possible. And so uh, there's a lot of people who, who just swear that, that there, there was a, an imposter there, not Oswald. Calling and asking about it. Yeah, just basically Oswald didn't go there. There was an imposter that went, went down there. Oh, oh, okay. So now mm -hmm. I, I have something better because I had, when I wrote one of the, whatever book we're talking about here, um, I, all, the, the CIA was able to actually interview the Russians and the, 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 the Cubans that were there, they agreed to go uh, to do a deposition of everything they remembered that happened in their consulate, if it was uh, Cuba, the embassy, if it was Russian. And the fact of the matter is that it was obvious whoever was on the phone, there was more phone calls that were made. There was three of them. But at every point, it didn't, it didn't jibe with what we know happened inside the consulate and the embassy. So that gave me the, the clue that, and, and actually the answer. Oswald failed in his job to get the visas. He wasn't really gonna go anywhere, but the, the CIA had a lot of Cubana airline pilots that were on the take that, that as long as he got the visa, they could say he would have been in Cuba. And there was already stuff in the mail coming from a, from a guy in Cuba saying, hi, Lee, it was great seeing you here, and all that. So all this stuff was in motion, right? And of course, he never got the visa, so he was in trouble. They sent him there to tie himself to Castro and again to remind everybody that he was KGB too, right? That's what he did. Now, I have to tell you, here we have... We're, we're, we're just weeks away from the motorcade, and the first thing that the FBI has to do for a motorcade is to know everybody who works on that, on that trip, on, not a trip, the route. on the route, exactly, and every, anybody who is even questionable is removed physically from that route, or, or the route has changed. And so uh, that's why Oswald wasn't taken off the parade route. Everything was suppressed. Everything he did down there was put in a different place until after the shots were, were, were fired. Everything that he did in Mexico, meeting at the consulate and the embassy, all, all those documents. The whole year, the whole shebang of, of playing, you know, that, that what he did uh, in, in Dallas, in, in, in New Orleans, and 
uh, again, then in New Orleans, then back in Dallas again. None of that stuff made it into his 201 file. Why? Because he would have been moved from the parade route. Who made it so that those files were not available to anyone? Good at the CIA? question. Good question. We know where they were filed. I uh, I think I brought. I don't know. I I have I have these 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 cover sheets where, where it shows that who read the, this file or that file, and it's it's very clear that they. Uh, they were not. Pl- he already had a 201 file. It was opened in in uh, 1962. Too late for for a lot of reasons, but that's not the point here. His 201 file had been opened um, uh, for a long time, right. and all the stuff he did in 1963 didn't go into it. It was hidden in another place. Just yeah. like it's just like Sully having all the documents coming from all the other government agencies being hidden at his his desk, so nobody could could know what happened except for him. Mm. So the same thing was going on, only this time the documents were sent to a place called the SAS, uh, and it's basically, that's that's the uh, Cuban Affairs staff. It's a huge staff now because of the Cuban problem. And there's a guy by the name of Des- Desmond Fitzgerald who has to know, he's the head of SAS and probably his deputy, but nobody else really knows that all these, these Hoover letterhead memorandums about everything Oswald was doing in New Orleans and stuff uh, were were not put, put into a one file. So then you have a, a situation while he's down there, while Oswald is down there in Mexico City, Wynn Scott, who is the head of the CIA station, has to ask a question because they don't know who he is. So they send a cable to headquarters. Who is a guy named, using the name Lee Harvey Oswald, walking all around here. Who, who is he? What, what do you know about him? Now, the guy who was in charge of the Mexico City desk, his name was John uh, Witten. And the only thing they gave him to answer when Scott was down there in Mexico City was the 201 file. They said, oh, well, hell, the latest information we have is May 62. Oswald was still in the Soviet Union then. All his entire life had been expunged for the purposes of of the communication going between headquarters and Mexico City. So, um, the lights didn't blink red in the CIA. Now, over at the FBI, at the same time, somebody took Oswald off the espionage list, which started when he went to Moscow back in 1959. Right. Nobody could put anything in the Oswald file or read anything in the Oswald file without getting permission from the espionage section of the FBI the whole time until while all the the lights are turned off in the CIA, the same thing happens in the FBI. He's taken off the espionage list. So he's not on there for the the, the crews that's supposed to remove people on the on the route of the motorcade. Who who could have done something like that? Uh, somebody who is very powerful, who is basically saying, you're going to do this. Now, how powerful? Well, you have to have somebody pretty high in the CIA to do it. This is a CIA. It has to be CIA. To, well, the 201 file part, not the FBI part. Right. I There's a lot of people that I, that I, I could guess at, but it's not important right now. I'm I'm working on this, and this is why I don't uh, I don't write my book yet, uh, because I have plenty of time. But I'm 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 very close to answering these exact questions. <laughs> <laughs>